Welcome back, everybody. We're uh, going to have a nice and interesting conversation with Eric uh, uh, Kwasniewski. Uh, Kwasniewski. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, it it kind of leads me into the into the next part of uh, you know the ability to pronounce your last name comes from my background, which apparently is shared by your dad. Uh, yeah. Your dad is Ukrainian, and so am I. Oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh wow! Look yeah. at that. So I, I, yeah. Go ahead. The, no, no, no. The the, uh, the Ukrainian people are are very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> a little bit of a uh, lot of emotion. A little bit of misery. Very creative. Um, yeah, <laughs> but very creative people, really, really yeah. smart people. Yeah, proud. Uh, you and I, you and I met at uh, Sherry Shaw's uh, uh, classes that we've been taking, you know, power hours, and I've seen you at least three or four of them. Uh, we've been on together, and I've uh, kind of, you know, made a mental note of uh, you have a you have a specific look, right? If people are looking at you, they're going to say, okay, this is a very serious guy. I definitely see. You know, act, actor who can play, you know, the FBI or the police agent. But then most of the time, that's not how you are. You're very friendly. You're very open. You're laughing and smiling. Uh, and it's interesting to me because uh, obviously you have range as an actor and you can play multiple roles. But the uh, your headshots are showing one side of you. And I most of the time I saw a completely different side of you. Is that what yeah. you're finding as well? Yeah, most of my life, actually, I have like a most people say that I have like an intimidating look about me when I'm just not even conscious, you know, just going about my daily business. Um, a very kind of like serious, maybe brooding type of look about me. And that's just because I'm thinking, um, you know, it's just the way that, and I don't, I mean, I'm aware of it, but when you talk to me and when you get to know me, I mean, it's, uh, I have a much lighter side to myself. So yeah. Very much yeah. so. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it was kind of that first impression, right? Um, when we come into the power hour, and the power hour is when uh, Sherry uh, Sherry is doing a wonderful job of allowing her students uh, to speak with casting directors and uh, you know producers and directors and fascinating yeah. people. We have a chance to read for them. Uh, so the first thing is we come in and I kind of see a bunch of uh, people on Zoom and I see Eric. And the first time I was like, okay, that guy is you know serious and brooding like you've mentioned. And then he started talking like that's a completely different guy. So uh, to me, it was it was an interesting note. Um, I I found something, and this uh, it reinforced what I was um, what I was sensing uh, watching you perform and watching you doing some of the uh, scenes. Um, yeah. That emotional base and the ability to kind of uh, snap into a dramatic character and have a lot of emotion behind it that comes uh, through on uh, on camera, but it, it also uh, in doing my research on you and in watching uh, watching some of your uh, performances um, and your demo reels, I saw that, okay, that's where it comes from because you didn't have, let's say, um, the easiest uh, upbringing and the easiest uh, journey here. Is that where that comes from? Uh, definitely, probably most of it. I, um, you know, uh, I'm here in Los Angeles for the second time. The first time was in my 20s, and uh, uh, yeah, I just had a lot of problems with addiction over the years, and uh, you know, I managed to, what I did was, uh, you know, I guess I was one of those actors, like many that come to Los Angeles, don't have a real sense of, of, of um, identity. They get lost in this crazy town they can't navigate, um, and then they, they suffer and a lot of them leave and go, I don't know what happens. But for me, and a lot of, you know, I mean, when I lived here before, I saw a lot of people that didn't fare well, that some of them lost their lives. But uh, for me, I was lucky and blessed to go back home to my hometown and get sober. Uh, so, you know, I managed to go back home and learn about myself and grow up, basically, um, but still have a lot of uh, interest in, in my cre creativity. I didn't lose that. So I'm back here in Los Angeles at 50, and it's kind of crazy. <laughs> 
yeah. because a lot of people, you know, um, it's I've gone gone against the norm. Most people would have given up on something like this and said, you know, I'm going to go and just get go a stable career somewhere and I'm going to like let this go. And I did let it go for a number of years. You know, I I really didn't want my ego to play a large role in contributing to the arts and contributing to this. So I really wanted to squash my ego and I really wanted it to be about connection and what I could bring. And once I felt that those things were in place in my life and in my psyche, I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to Los Angeles because I feel that um, I have something to offer today and that's genuine and that I can show up and I can do a good job and work with other people, so. And I, I can attest to that. And I, I, I've never been on set with you. We haven't done any work uh, together other than these uh, uh, these seminars. But the one constant that I saw is how easily you connect with others and how genuine you are in that connection. So, you know, lots Thank of you. people, some very uh, well-known uh, people who are, you know, leading those seminars and you always find something in common with them. Uh, it's different for uh, every individual, but you immediately kind of zero in on, okay, I, I get that part of you. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely see that. Now, you've mentioned you know the second uh, trip to LA. In your first uh, trip, was that, yeah. and I know you grew up in, in Philadelphia, but uh, was that before you went to New York, uh, the first trip to LA, or was that no. uh, you know, New York was after? No, I grew up in Philadelphia, and then at 18, I went to New York City. Um, I went to uh, a city university in the Bronx, and I studied theater. So I, I started theater in, the, in high school, uh, doing plays in high school, and then I went to New York City in the Bronx and started and got really involved in the theater. And that really saved my life because um, – you know, it was a tough childhood. I had a tough childhood. And that um, being a part of the theater really was um, a lot of love for me. And it really um, was my expression. You know, I really had a chance to be a part of something where I could feel free to express myself in different ways. So that was New York first. Yeah, New York first. New York and then first. LA. And, and then. LA. And then, so when you were doing stand up, uh, yeah. was that the second time you went to New York, or that was uh, kind of before the first LA visit? No, before I came to LA for the first time. I started in New York and um, I started at a, um, a place called Glad Gladys's. She had an open mic at a little comedy club in New York. Yeah. And there were a few people there at the very beginning that I was with that started ex about the same time. So that was me, Zach Galifianakis, Nadia Ginsburg, um, Victor Verhehe, uh, and Jim Gaffigan. Those were the people that were around those first few months that we started at the same time. Yeah, so. It's, it's an interesting yeah. group of people to hang out with. Uh, did you do a lot of that? Were you, uh, were you guys uh, hanging Every out? night. Yeah. Every night. Um, yeah, well, I had gotten sick when I was uh, 21, and um, I uh, was diagnosed with AIDS when I was 21, and I was really uncertain about how long I would live, and I somehow, a friend of mine took me to a comedy club one night to cheer me up, and I really fell in love with what I saw. So I've had these moments in my life where I've been blessed to be guided into something. And it's always a lot of creativity has saved my life. And so I, I can honestly say that it's been a big, big part of my, um, my faith, uh, you know, being able to express, uh, to make people laugh. Uh, that was a big part of my life. And I, Honestly, I really believe that was a huge contributing factor 
for my health. You know, I'm very healthy today. Uh, I have a great immune system. I've been blessed to survive. So I've survived an epidemic, you know, and um, I've been really fortunate. Well, that's yeah. wonderful to hear. Um, I'm, I'm so happy, you know, first of all, that you're here. Uh, and I don't just mean on this show, that you're here, here. Um, but it's, it's great how uh, you allowed yourself to not just receive that guidance, but to actually do something about it. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm not surprised that you're in LA again. I'm not surprised that you're continuing to do this because I think that's that's really the core part of of you, and that's that creativity, that ability to uh, to use that part of yourself uh, in that expression. I think that's who you are, and that allows you to uh, to do everything else. So I'm very happy that you actually went through with it. A lot of people may have seen that guide and said, okay, I get it and not do anything about it. I'm, I, I'm commending you for, uh, for having the uh, good spot to, uh, to go ahead with it. Yeah, I don't know how I'm here or why, but mm -hmm. I know that, you know, so the, the thing is, is that, you know, the, we, we all have dark times in our life um, and there is different elements. I mean, there were a lot of things that were presented to me, like people that cared and people that wanted to help me. And um, sometimes I took the help and sometimes I didn't. But later on, I really started to take advantage of all of the help that was offered. And I followed through with it because there was uh, definitely something inside of me that wanted a better life. And I kept moving towards that. So that's, it's movement. It's always movement forward, movement forward, despite because there's never a, you know, there's never a like mountaintop that we get to. It's just, it's the only thing we really have control over is moving forward. And that's really it is moving forward and being on this journey, staying on the journey and seeing where it takes you. So it's pretty much, thank yeah. No, it's, yeah. thank you for saying that because uh, a lot of people who are not necessarily familiar with the, you know, actor's lifestyle, uh, you know, they see stars on TV, they see uh, the, you know, the cars and the riches, and they don't understand that, you know, to get there, certain people do. Uh, most of the people are not there. Most of the people are working odd jobs just to pursue their passion. And right. you have to live it to understand it. And um, I love when in, um, in The Marvelous Miss Maisel, uh, in the beginning of the show, when she was uh, when she was speaking to the uh, comic whose name I can't believe I forgot right now, um, mm -hmm. she was asking him, you know, would you do it uh, if you could do anything else? And he said, I would love to do something else because this is insane, but I have to because that's who I am. Same same applies to yeah. acting, to comedy. You just it's either you or it's not. And right. um, I'm happy that you're sharing the uh, you know your story and what actually uh, life is like of a lot of actors. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's exhilarating, but it's a lot of uh, struggles uh, that you have to go through. Yeah, and I think that for me personally, uh, you know, I, I made a decision that when I came out here again, where I'm at in my life is that I am still um, hopeful and I'm still optimistic yeah. that there's a place for me in this business but also at the same time, I wanted to be honest about my story because I wanted to offer people that if I have a chance like this platform to be able to say that you can still move forward and there's still hope if no matter what you're going through to be able to maintain your, your dreams and to be able to maintain and stay on a path that makes you feel like you have purpose, you know? So a lot of my prayer about being in this business now is that I have the chance to have some success um, in the business. You know, I mean, I already feel that I'm a success, but to be successful as far as professionally working, mm -hmm. to be able to, to, to offer something to other people that may have lost sight of their purpose or their dreams. And to say that you know what you can come out of something, so that's you know that's important. 
It's important that, you know, right now we're in a pandemic. It's it's very important to hear that as well, just from that perspective, that we can come yeah. out of it and no matter what you go through, you can uh, have a smile on your face and uh, you can use that uh, as your way forward. So, yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. Now, you know, where you are right now, and you're in L.A., obviously, you're, you're auditioning, you're studying a lot. You know, I only see you in some classes. I'm sure you do a lot more uh, working with Sherry and others. But... What uh, what do you do? Do you uh, do you have a side uh, hustle? Um, uh, is acting something that you know pays enough for you not to do anything else right now? Uh, well, that's uh, I still. So what I was doing in Philadelphia was I was selling real estate, yep. and um, I was doing that while I was getting sober, and uh, so probably like the last ten years. So I still have a little bit of that going on there, which mm -hmm. I kind of monitor from here <laughs> and i have other people take care of things for me so there's a little bit of income from philadelphia which i'm mm -hmm. thankful for yeah but uh yeah for now you might see me working at sprint one day you know or I, who knows and, <laughs> and I that, have to do. yeah it, it doesn't matter and that's uh doesn't matter I remember uh, a number of months ago, you know, people started uh, kind of posting all over the social media about, you know, a you know very well-known actor that was working uh, in a in a grocery store. And Absolutely. They were shocked by that? It's not shocking. That's reality, and it's okay. Yes. It doesn't make yes. when you look an actor, uh, you know, by by doing something else. You are an actor. That's who you are. Yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of becoming an actor, you know, your your path. Uh, You've mentioned that you were in New York and you were studying there. And then uh, in New York, you get a chance to work with one of my favorite actors, uh, Victor Garber. Um, what was oh, yeah. that like? Uh, what What did you learn from it in terms of uh, you know acting technique specifically? Well, with Victor Garber, one of the things that was really key for me was that he um, was very encouraging, and he really thought that I believe, made me believe that I had a lot of talent, mm -hmm. and he was. Um, somebody that grounded me a bit and he was um you know uh, we had a lot of truth in our conversations and there was a lot of um he understood me as a person which was really great uh he paid attention to me and made me believe that i was someone that really did have uh a, a lot of talent and that was important to me at the time i needed a mentor you know, in my early 20s. And he was someone that was like that for me, that made me believe in myself. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. Again, I don't know anything about Victor Garber, you know, as, as a person. I've just seen him in uh, in films, but uh, he seems like a very genuine uh, human being. So it's it's great that you had that. Uh, yeah. And he's also been a working actor for so long. He's in so many different things. And uh, I really admire that type of life. I would love to have that life for myself, you know. So, and it's it's not uh, it's not too late, you know. I'm uh, I'm 45. Uh, you're 50. So all of these uh, ages don't don't matter in the acting world because there are roles for all ages and there are roles for all types. And yeah. it doesn't matter when you start. It all matters of uh, you know whether it's something that you want to do or not. Um, let's talk about South Africa because yeah. uh, I know your mom is from uh, South Africa and then you had a chance to go there and uh, you've worked there and you've studied yeah. there. What was yeah. that like? Oh, that was uh, the highlight of my life. I mean, mm -hmm. because I had never thought that I would meet um, a part of my family that I never knew. Mm -hmm. And I went to meet them in 2013 and then uh, I just loved the connection that I had with people there. My spirit felt very connected to the people there and also to my family. So I went to go see a play at a film school and I met people there uh, and I said, I, I wanna go back to school and get my degree. So the following year I figured it out and I enrolled and got accepted into this film school. Um, and uh, I went back and it was incredible. It was an incredible experience. 
the school, the country, the culture, mm -hmm. um, the the love and the respect that I have for them and they for me. You know, um, I was the you know big daddy on campus because I was the oldest student. <laughs> but they, we worked together. We created things right off the bat, and I had a chance to really get in um, further, get in touch and embrace my identity as human being. And that was the South African side of me. Um, and it was, um, it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. Yeah. I did a few documentaries. I did, uh, you know, I did things I never dreamed I could do. I made a pilot for television, a uh, few films, and then acted in a lot of films. And I didn't go there to act. That was the thing. I wanted to learn how to create content. That's why I went to the school to learn how to direct and write and then produce something and see the final result. But along the way, I kept getting offered work as an actor. It was very interesting. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we'll, we'll come back to South Africa for, in a second, but yeah. isn't it interesting how when you are not laser focused on something and you're focused on something else, then other areas of your life start to open up? Um, yeah. I, I don't know if it's because of the pressure that we're putting ourselves to, you know, book certain acting roles. But you know, if that's the only thing that we're focusing on, sometimes kind of everything else uh, doesn't happen, and we keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. But when we let go and we just kind of allow things to happen, and we're there doing our thing, things naturally come into our world, which I yeah. find fascinating. It is fascinating. It is fascinating. Um, I, I'm a real believer in that, Alan. You know, at this moment right now, I feel that there are a few other things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so there are some other creative things that I want to focus on, you know, that are going to um, yeah, just and then also just to have life experience. Sometimes, okay. I, the, the, you know, since I've been here in September, I've been focused every week on acting, the craft of acting, doing scenes, doing working out. Uh, and it's been incredible, incredible, and I love it. But I think that this next month or so, there's different things that I want to do just to have life experiences where my mind is able to add to the library and then yeah. step back in, step back into class again. So I think that's important. You know, we have to kind of let go a little bit. And it doesn't mean the intentions aren't there. It yeah. just means that we're opening ourselves up to a larger world. You know, yeah. and then we can, yeah, it's important. Yeah. Mental yeah. health is important. Yeah, for mental health, it's extremely important. And we're portraying yeah. people. You know, how can you portray people if you don't know people, if you're if not you know what people are doing? Well, thank uh, you. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I totally get that. Um, back to South, uh, South Africa, um, a, a natural question arises to, uh, for me personally. But if you loved it so much and you were there for so long, why did you leave? Well, I wanted to stay. Uh, the uh, visas for people in the entertainment business are okay. difficult to come by unless you have a job. So if I was hired on a series there, then I would have gotten a visa. But because, and I, I tried, I really tried, I wanted to stay. But because of that, I was only able to keep a student visa. And that was one of the, that was one of the hard things. Understood. And I really broke my heart when I had to come back to the States. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. But I definitely tried. I had a lawyer. I had, yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. And what is the, um, you know, lastly on South Africa, what is the, you know, uh, community there like in terms of acting, in terms of the uh, amount of work that they do and the level of it? Well, so this is the thing. It's really a newer democracy. So it's only been 26 years and, uh, you know, that apartheid ended and that there's been a constitution. And so you have all of this new generation or two generations now in that 26 years that have really seized the opportunities of, of having more choices. Okay, more choices, more freedom. 
And as a result of that, there's a lot of motivation among uh, young South Africans. Well, all South, all South Africans, I'm not going to just say young, but to, uh, to create content, storytell, get the world to see it. And they are so um, ex enthused about doing it and they actually do it. You know, there's not a lot of procrastination there. It's we get the camera, we get the crew, everyone's showing up and we're making it. That's what I really loved about that was it was done um, without delay. And so you were a part of this very enthusiastic crew of people telling stories. Um, and so I think that that's something that they, they have not taken for granted, like a lot of people in the United States, that, you know, we have time or I can, um, I have so many distractions here in the States. I can put off doing something there. They don't have as much as we do. So it just pushes them to get things done. And I loved that in that that enthusiasm was incredible. I got swept up in it. I loved it. One of my favorite emotions is enthusiasm. I love when people are excited. I love to see people like worked up in like a frenzy where they feel really passionate about something. I that's my one of the things that I live for is that type of enthusiasm about something. So yeah. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, sorry if uh, if I brought up something painful, but I appreciate you being honest about it and uh, telling us the real story. Um, oh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, okay. So as, as we kind of, uh, um, as you're back in LA, right? So yeah. what's next for you? What would be your definition of success at this chapter in your acting life? Well, that would be to um, definitely get in the door mm -hmm. uh, as far as my, my management, getting me in the door and having the opportunity to book job, professional jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely see myself as someone working on a series. Um, I see myself somewhat as someone that is able to interpret what the writer has in store for a character's development and where that character can go. Uh, and so I align myself with that in my thoughts and I see myself doing something like that. Um, and I also see myself um, winning an Emmy one day. I do. I see myself, I've always had that, I, there's always been, it's, it sounds crazy, but I've always had this thought in my head about winning an Emmy. And I hold, I just hold that. It's, and I, it's important. It's important to hold on to that. Who knows? Jim Carrey wrote a, a check for $20 million uh, to himself when he was broke. And then he you know, was able years later. Absolutely. So hold on to, uh, to your thought of an Emmy. And Absolutely. I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Again, I, I'm, I'm a you know up and coming actor. I'm not a casting director. I'm not a producer. I'm not a director. I'm not an acting coach. So, you know, my opinion is my own and from my own prison, but I, definitely see uh, you working on a series. I see your potential. I see the type. I see the emotional depth uh, that it takes to do it. I don't see a reason why not. Uh, yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised at all for you to uh, to achieve those goals, including an Emmy. I'm, I'm not surprised by that at all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, those are the things that, you know, that's where I'm at. I mean, I'm clear today about where I want to be and what I'd like to be a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and so you have to have conviction. You have to have conviction and you also have to have space in your life to allow um, other things to be a part of your life as well. You know, it's about, it's about balance and it's about holding on to working hard, also working hard towards something, you know? but having balance in your life where you're not, you know, anything, it's like, I always look at it this way. Anything that I make um, too much of, uh, you know, is something that I could lose. So I always try to just keep a lot of things um, in perspective. 
keep it in perspective, but continue to work towards. And that's, you know, and that's, that's a good fit for me. Uh, and I think that it keeps me in a place where I don't take myself too seriously, but yet I'm still working towards something, which is good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I keep coming back to kind of an example of uh, Mark Wahlberg. You know, Mark Wahlberg, when he was growing up, he, uh, I remember him saying that, okay, I, I got to a certain level, but I didn't think I was going to you know, live past, uh, you know, my 20s. So, sure. um, you know, I come back uh, to your perspective of you went through uh, you know, not being sober. You went through uh, uh, AIDS. You went through a lot of trials and tribulations. There is no reason uh, for you to be worried about what the future brings. You've gone through all of the wars. Uh, yeah. yeah. So keep to your convictions. Uh, keep driving and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. That's right. More to be revealed, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, as we wrap up, there is the, there's yeah. one question that I ask uh, all of uh, all of our actors that come on. If you were able to give advice to a younger acting version of yourself, what would that advice have been? The advice would be to know that what if you're headed down a path that's dark, mm -hmm. that you can take a detour. That there's no, don't listen to what you might be feeling at the time as fact, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of people out there that are waiting to help guide you in a different direction. If you can't get there yourself, there's a lot of people out there. You just have to have a little bit of clearance in your mind to allow that to come in. Because I know that that happened for me. That there were people that came into my life that shifted the way that I thought. So I think that would be the main thing is that your thoughts will shift. And whatever it might feel like now, like the end of the road or I can't or whatever it might be, there's always a shift. And you have to hang on for that shift to happen because it will, it will. So that's what I would say, yeah, is to hang on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank yeah. you. It, yeah, it, man. It goes into the point of, uh, of people do change. And, they do. Uh, change is possible. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, Eric, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on. I really appreciate now, it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, thanks my fellow Ukrainian, Ukrainian, my Yuki buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's an important story to share. So I'm, I'm glad uh, that you were uh, able to jump on and share it with people. I know it's, it's, uh, it's important, and uh, hopefully it'll help, you know, somebody who's viewing this. Um, yeah. Thank you to That'll everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks to everybody who's tuning in. Uh, thank you for watching this. Thank you for watching uh, our other work. We have a lot more to come. Uh, please come back, please subscribe, please share with your friends and uh, let everybody know if uh, you are indeed in love with acting like we are. Yeah. Thank yeah. you again, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Alan. Take care. Okay.